Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Today marks the one-year anniversary of my website, whitetrashcooking.com, so I felt like doing something special. In one of my DVD sets, specifically the set of DVDs that are the British cooking series, Two Fat Ladies, Clarissa made this dish that she referred to as Rabbit Isabel, and it gave me an idea of something I want to experiment with with goose. So that's what I'm going to do. I bought a goose this week. They're very expensive, $45 each here in the USA. It's between 11 and 12 pounds, and I'm going to make it roughly the way Clarissa did when she cooked that rabbit, with some variations, of course, because of the size. So I don't know what to call this. Goose Isabel? Clarissa? Goose Clarissa? I don't know what to call this. But that's what I'm going to be experimenting with today. So let's look at the ingredients. I have here one half cup of wild rice, which is about three ounces or 85 grams. One goose that I've thawed. This is between 11 and 12 pounds, which is about five to five and a half kilograms. One half cup of flour, which is three ounces, say 85 grams. One quarter teaspoon each of ground mustard, ground rosemary, white pepper, and salt. One half pound of pork sausage. I'm going to be using only half that chub. And then a spring of basil, which is about five to six leaves. I have three to four fresh sage leaves. Salt and pepper I'll be adding later on. And then two eggs. I'm going to be using only the egg whites to kind of act as a bit of a glue to hold the stuffing together. And then finally, six to eight thin slices of ham or prosciutto. So those are my ingredients. I'm going to be grinding up some of the meat in a food processor. This is the heart, the gizzards, and the liver. I'm going to add those to the ground meat when I'm grinding it up in the food processor. You'll understand more later on when I get to that part of the recipe. My first challenge here is to skin and bone part of this goose. I'm going to save the breast meat and use that for my roast, but I'm going to carve up what I can of the leg meat and combine those with the heart and the gizzards and so forth and so forth in a food processor and make it my stuffing. Okay, I don't need the wings, so I want to take the wings off. In popping these wings out, the one thing I do want to be careful of is that I don't take a lot of the breast meat with it because I don't want to damage the breast meat. Since that's the best part of my roast. Okay, wings are off. Starting at the bottom, I'm going to pull the skin off. Goose is a very fatty bird. So there's going to be a lot of fat under this skin. And by the way, I'm saving what goose fat I can because I can rend that. Goose fat is very popular for cooking. It's an unusual fat in that it's very low in saturated fat. It's a healthy fat for you as opposed to, say, butter. In fact, the French love to fry potatoes in goose fat. In the meanwhile, I'm cooking my rice because that has to cook for 45 minutes. It does help to have a good sharp knife. I'm using a boning knife and I do keep my knives razor sharp. In fact, I put on YouTube a video on how to sharpen knives. Because you just, there's no point in trying to be a good cook if you're not going to have good tools. Again, imagine trying to do this with a dull knife. There's just no point. I've got a page from an old Good Housekeeping magazine, like 1890s or something. I talked about taking the bone and gristle out of a turkey leg. It's hilarious. I'll read it one of these days when I'm doing a turkey. 
how to get the tendons out of the legs. That's the, that was the point of that um, article. If I haven't mentioned it already, goose meat is all dark meat. Unlike chickens, which do not fly, and turkeys that do not fly, geese fly. And therefore they use their breast muscles, and that's what makes the meat dark. Okay, there's not a whole lot of meat on geese, which is a shame because, as I mentioned, they're so expensive. Forty-five dollars I, I spent for, on this bird. You would hope for that amount of money, you could get a lot of meat. I mean, every Thanksgiving I try to buy a turkey and cut it up roast it for my lazy man meals. Turkeys are like 89 cents a pound. Sometimes you can find them as little as 39 cents a pound around Thanksgiving. This bird, I want to say it was three or four dollars per pound. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm separating this breast meat From the rib cage. Got some trimming to do here. There we go. Not much. That's one breast fillet. These are my two breast pieces. What I want to do is I want to section these into two slices each by going right through them. And then I'm going to stuff inside, put stuffing on the inside and tie them and roast them. The anatomy here is very close to that of a chicken. So I know where to do the cutting because I've deboned plenty of chickens. It's just the joints here are really, really hard to pop. You can't pop these the way you can a, a chicken. Wow, that is a tough joint to pop. Ah, there we go. Okay, this isn't good for anything. I don't think I would use that for making stock. I don't know what goose stock would taste like. There is some meat on here that I do want to just trim off. Taking the meat out of the legs, it's not unlike doing a chicken. Again, feel for the joint and just cut right down through it. Not as easy as doing a chicken, but it's doable. And I'm not going to be really fussy with this meat the way I would with a chicken because this is all just going to go into a food processor and get chopped up. So there's my bone out. That's the piece of the joint that always stays attached. 
and I'm just going to slice this meat up so that it'll chop up in the food processor better. It's a little bit too fatty there. Drumstick. I'm just going to carve meat off the drumstick like so. Again, no point in getting fussy. I try to keep one hand dry because that's holding the knife and I don't want to slip with my knife. If you watch my video on deboning a chicken, at the very end I have an outtake where I admit to having cut myself just a tiny nick. But I try not to lose control of the knife when I'm doing something like this because again I keep my knives razor sharp. And if I slip, it could give me a pretty good cut. Now I gotta do some cleanup here so there's all my meat. I have to do some cleanup and then I'll be able to start chopping my meat. Having taken all my meat off the bones, this is the leg meat here from the thigh and the drumsticks, and the gizzards and the heart. Put my herbs in there. That's fresh basil and fresh sage. And then because I like to cheat and have less cleanup, I'm going to put a little bit of a barrier in there so I don't get the lid dirty. And then put my lid on top, wipe my hands here, and see how this goes as far as chopping it up. Let's see what I got here. Oh, that looks great. Okay, so there's all my chopped meat. And that's ready now to continue working, making my stuffing. I have my ground meat in a bowl. This is my cooked sausage meat. I didn't put the sausage meat in with the meat when I ground it up because the sausage meat is going to be chunky and that'll give me a little more texture. A couple more pieces there. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be using egg whites in here to act as a binder to hold this together. I'll save these yolks because I'll put those in bread the next time I make bread. I make bread every other weekend. Okay. Set those aside. And then just get your hands in there and start mixing all this up. One thing I hope you appreciate about this that's a little unusual is this is a meat filling rather than a bread filling or stuffing rather. I'm mixing this well because it's going to be a little bit war of work to get that egg white distributed because naturally it's going to want to all flow down to the bottom of the bowl. And just by the feel of this, I like the feel of this because with my fingers in there I can feel the chunks of pork sausage meat, which is what I want. I want a mixed texture to this stuffing. Okay, so there's my meat. This is my cooked wild rice. There's some water in the bottom of this pan, just a little bit. 
I did drain this, by the way. And now I want to get this mixed in. If I haven't already mentioned it, I think wild rice just seems to be perfect with goose. And that is a lot of stuffing. I may not end up using all of that in my stuffed breast meat, but I am certainly going to try because I think this will be delicious. And you see this, these white pieces of blue skin. If you find them, you can pick those out. That's kind of a tough skin that's in that meat. I don't know that it really matters, but if I see them, I pull them out. Okay, so there's my stuffing. Now I'm ready to start stuffing my goose breasts. Everything else has gone according to plan. I'm hoping this part will. This is one of my goose breasts. And with a very sharp knife, being careful not to cut my fingers. There it is. Slice that into two slabs. One is going to be larger than the other, but because of course the breast is rounded, but that'll be all right. These will be, this is our next step is to get these stuffed. Now you might be wondering how I'm going to get half of this stuff, stuffing mix onto this without it all falling apart. Well, that's where this ham comes in. Gonna set this ham around the outside. You could use prosciutto and use just enough to contain everything. I think I started off saying six pieces, but I'm, I'm gonna end up using more, obviously. All right. And then dividing my stuffing roughly in half here. Look at that. And there's a nice big mound of stuffing. Oh, I can smell that sage already. This is going to be so good. I'm going to just start wrapping this up. Like so. And then putting the slab of breast meat on top. Look at that. That is a nice big roast. Now let me wash my hands here and I'm going to be tying this up. Okay, I have some kitchen twine here cut. This gives me an opportunity to use my surgeon's knot. You go down once, go down around twice, and a third time. Someone got onto my website and emailed me about this and gave me this tip of using surgeon's knots when tying meat so you don't have to try to hold that knot with your fingers while you're tying it. And by the way, just while I'm doing this, I might as well mention when working with raw meat, it's good to wash your hands often so you don't cross-contaminate other things in your kitchen way I accomplish that is I wash my dishes constantly as I'm going along so my hands are in soapy water throughout this whole process. Everything I've used so far that's been emptied has been washed. All right, so there is a beautiful stuffed, I mean most of this is the internal meat from the goose. You can see the, 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 the goose breasts themselves are small pieces. They're basically just there along with the string and the ham to hold everything together. But there is a nice roast. I have my other one to do, and then I'll be ready to start browning these. I've got a skillet on the stove here in which I'm warming some fat. And what fat am I using? I'm using goose fat. I did rend that fat from the pieces that I took from the goose. I'll show you that when I put the um, 
the goose pieces, breast pieces in the oven. Just bringing this up to temperature. And then I have my, my seasoned flour on the side and my goose ready to be dredged in flour. All right, I'm gonna do these one at a time. All these funny loose edges, those will all get seared into place and give me a nice smooth loaf. The easiest way to turn this is with a pair of spatulas, like so. Okay, I am finding that two minutes for a side is enough to give me this nice dark browning. Doing the ends is going to be the challenge because this is a heavy piece of meat. And I'll show you a trick for doing that in a moment. In cooking class, we use tongs to hold a roast up on its end for browning. I'm going to use these silicone gloves. Because these are washable, they'll keep my hands dry and cool. Now that I've got this up on end, I could, if I wanted to, use tongs just to balance this. But I don't mind standing here for two minutes holding it with my gloves on. All right, there it is. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to move this to a platter, and then I'm going to dredge my other roast in the flour and brown that and then I'll be ready for my next step. I wiped my skillet out. Normally I would leave the fond in the pan because it would flavor the rest of this dish, but a lot of that was charred flour, which I don't really want in my pan. So I chopped my onion and I'm gonna saute this onion for probably a good five, six, maybe even seven minutes until over medium heat until it's tender and um, translucent. I don't really need to darken this. I'm not going to caramelize my onion, but I do want to get it well cooked. There are my onions, lightly browned a little bit, mostly just tender and translucent. I'm going to move my roasts to the skillet. Add to the original ingredients about half a cup of white wine. And then I'm going to put this in the oven. This red handle is probably oven safe silicone, but it slides off so easily. I'm going to pull it off. And then I'm going to place this in the oven and cook this until I get an internal temperature of about, again, 160, 155, 160 degrees. When I let those sit for 20 minutes, that internal temperature will continue to rise as the heat migrates from the outside to the center. And it should come up between 165 and 170, which is a safe temperature for goose, chicken, turkey, that sort of meat. I said earlier that I was going to rend my goose fat. So I put it all in this stock pot with a little bit of water and boil this for probably maybe a half an hour. So I'm going to filter this. I bought this little inexpensive plastic and nylon filter in a grocery store. I think it works great for filtering things like stock and oil. I've got a lot of goose fat here. And I think I mentioned earlier that some cooks really prize goose fat for cooking. There it is. A full jar of goose fat. Hard to believe that all that fat came out of a goose. One goose. But they do yield an awful lot of fat. So this will go into the refrigerator and I can use this for cooking. Okay, here is my pair of roast goose breasts out of the oven. It took about an hour to get these up to 150, 155 degrees. I'm going to let these rest now for about 10 minutes. 
and then that will now 15 minutes that will let the heat migrate to bring up the inside to about 165 168 which is where it needs to be for safe eating after giving my roasts time to rest they each came up to 170 degrees in one 171 degrees in the other a respectable very safe temperature at which to eat these now I want to carve these and see what they look like inside. I have removed the strings. Looks like a meatloaf, doesn't it? Beautiful. Can't wait to taste these now and see how good they are. To plate this, I would put my piece of meat on the plate. That's those extra pieces of breast meat there. And then from the skillet, <laughs> a little bit of that wine onion mixture. And then I didn't put any salt in this when I put it together, so it's probably going to need a little bit of salt at the table. So there it is. Some goose breast stuffed with chopped goose meat and wild rice. I really want to see how this is going to taste because, as I said in the beginning, this is an experiment. I haven't done this before. Mmm. Very much a meaty flavor. The onions on top. That onion wine sauce is delicious. Oh, that is so good. Mmm. Okay. For a first try, I think this is excellent. Excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my lunch. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.